too little too late. Three things we need, two things we need, what three words, better flight planning and pilot operating handbooks. This video has been on my desk for a week and I'm done in with it so let's just get it out there. I feel a little bit vindicated in my decision to use a Twin Otter as Cessna are bringing out the Sky Courier which is pretty much a modern Twin Otter so I feel good about that and there it sits with its uh, cousin the uh, Caravan. Uh, FedEx are going to have 50 of these in 2020 uh, with another 50 on order so I feel happy about that. The next thing that I stumbled across because I instantly worked out that it, there was issues creating football pitch landing areas and addressing them or finding their address in the Sutu. I remembered a thing. The thing was what three words? And it seems like lunacy at first. Um, they're actually doing a trial just down the road from here. If you've not heard from it, of it, download the app, have a look, and it'll begin to make sense. But this is how I'm going to address those football pitches in the Sutu. So right, let's get on some flying. Um, I will leave the files to do this in the next run of zipped files that I've put up. But basically, this is a fly around the circuit of FAGM Fox Alpha Golf Mike, not just using uh, Rand because it's my initials, but because it's got a great cafe, a fantastic little hotel, and uh, it's a, a lovely museum. It's a great place. That's where I always stay if I go to uh, jo have to go to the city of Jobo. Um, so we're going to use the real chart the real chart will be in uh, in the files as well along with others so right first off what we need to do is we need to load the waypoints we're going to use uh, that will be in there so we load those onto our virtual autopilot because remember that's what we're creating so those are the waypoints there they all are tickety boo and the next thing we need to do is start or download the the Sittle software so we need xplane and then we need the Arduplane, Ardu even, firmware. And that'll download, and that'll connect to X-Plane, an aeroplane. There we are, run 3.5. That's good. That's where we want to be. So that's all jolly tickety-boo. We need to load the file for the aeroplane itself, the Dash 7. So there we go. Let's get that Dash 7. And then once that's done that, we'll actually put that into... Because remember, our computer thinks it's got an autopilot connected now. So put that into that autopilot. We need to put the waypoints into that autopilot. There they go. And that should be us ready to go flying. Tickety-boo. Out, up, turn left towards the zoo, then down towards Gav, and then hook back round again uh, to join the approach. Oh, there we go. There's Gav out there. Uh, 1155 from memory, if I remember rightly. Um, then back around again. Right, so right there we are. I like to put this button down here into manual so if it all goes wrong, I can click onto that. And we click auto, go back to X plane. The dial should start moving around to the right. When they move to the right, we should be able to go forward by knocking the brakes off and put a tad of flap in and watch a very poor takeoff because I haven't bothered playing around with this too much at all i've been doing other things <laughs> connected with this and this is why this video is taking so long so we've rolled, rolled off the runway a little bit so if anyone thinks they can do a better job then they can change these files so that's what i've made this file for is a sort of a reference file and i've made the default de de departure out and towards the zoo why not why not turn left to go to uh, joeberg zoo and then turn towards the beacon and that'll make the standard departure to the north uh, from Rand. That's what it'll be. And then down towards the beacon. And then once uh, we've overflown the beacon, we'll start our on route navigation from there. Well, that's how I envisage doing it. Of course, we could do it however we wanted. It's our world, it's my life. So now we're on, on route to the beacon. And the cool thing is, I'm using, I think I'm right in pronouncing this correctly, it's Ortho 4XP for my photo real scenery. You can download that for anywhere in the world and grab that. And you probably notice some roads coming up there underneath. That's the Altitude Angel UTM stuff. And the great thing about having the photo real scenery is you should, um, as you make the turn, be able to see the beacon or, or certainly see some infrastructure around it. So let's see if we can see the beacon now. We're just coming up to the turn. 
There's the turn, so it should be beneath us somewhere. Where is it? Uh, there it is. There it is there. So there's the beacon there. So that confirmed our navigation very nicely for us. And now we're just hooking around uh, to connect with the end of the approach, uh, which is going to be 8,000 feet, which was on that chart. Again, I'll put all the charts for airfields and things uh, in. And, of course, being an X-Plane, you can play with... Um, you can play with the VOI, play, you play with all sorts of things as you fly around if you have an early interest in it. So here we go, getting ready to make the turn. Let's uh, turn two turns into that final approach, just gives you less work to do, um, less less headings to change rather than making 90 degree turns, not, not good practice to make 90 degree turns into things. So right there we are at the end of that, we'll be at 12.2 miles and I will have to look at the chart to remember how high we will be. So a little look at the chart tells me, oh, eight, of course, 8,000 feet at 10 miles, we're at 7,500 feet and so on and so forth as we go down the hill. Now, one of the snags will be, there we go, here comes a turn. Uh, the only reason you'll have to monitor flights if you choose to volunteer uh, at the moment is because the sittle doesn't uh, won't bring the flaps or gear down and sort of help sort the speed out this way there is a command that's reduced the speed you can see on the left the speed to that green bar the speed should be coming down but it's a bit of a slippy airplane like this if you don't don't hang stuff down and uh, and, it, and it, 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 it'll struggle to slow down so what I have discovered for this one is that on the boundary of controlled airspace which is uh, just passing the 10 mile mark is where I start slowing it down. Uh, you can see there's the airfield in the distance and that curve of green in front of us, that's that's on the map. That, that's just about the, the edge across that road and you can see that river sort of area there. Um, that's where I start like, like to start containing the speed as we come down the hill here. This is going. This is like watching paint dry. I appreciate that, and this is where I, the, the bit where I said about um, uh, pilot operating handbooks. It would be really great if we could just put in the stall speeds, approach speeds, and all that sort of thing. All the standard flying speeds that you'd have in a pilot's operating handbook. I'd really like it if if there was just a space in the ground control station where I could put all those numbers and it would magically work. And then the other sort of flight planning thing is it would be really great if I could just click. VORs, NDBs and all that sort of thing and again it would magically join them all up rather than having to find them on the map um, <laughs> and, and then enter them as waypoints but of course that's all beyond the remit of uh, of this autopilot really it is for uh, for small drones in reality you've got to remember that um, to put it in context so let's put the gear down and as we put the gear down we'll put some flaps in and that will drag the speed down even more we're not far away now from our target speed uh, so we're coming down the hill quite nicely. Uh, what I will say is that this is going to be a very untidy landing because, again, I haven't really sorted it out and it would be good if somebody could help sort me out, sort it out a bit more. And that's the point of working together on this sort of thing. What three words? Uh, I've already... Part of the reason that I have, haven't, haven't released this is I've already looked at the first 25 little mini football pitch size airfields um, and obviously I've, I've picked some um, some silly words for them I mean wh why wouldn't you um, so we'll be making um, landings at drummer marketed citrus uh, floral whooped slip waterway cringe ascension uh, check out chapter co-founder and so on and so there's another funny one oh that was quite a good word that one Oh, balloons, out, balloons outweigh same and foreigners mortally bulk. Uh, you'll understand. If you get the app, you'll understand what on earth I'm going on about. It does say, it does seem like lunacy, but it's actually pretty clever. You see, we're coming on to the approach correctly now. The pappies are just about right. We were a little bit low on the approach. I could have added a few meters on that, but it's good enough. Good enough for government work. And also you'll see that um, we're not going to hit the runway at the right point. We're going to bounce. But that's all good. So hopefully I can persuade somebody else to volunteer, another couple of people to volunteer. We've already got three volunteers. Like, subscribe, do whatever, whatever else you need to do on YouTube. Um, and don't forget to join us at 2100 GMT every Tuesday for Drone Stuff this week. Our chat where we generally rant on about nothing. Oh, there goes the aiming point. This is all going horribly wrong.
Thanks for watching. Cheerio.